All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube, Pastor Dowell here. All right, listen, so <clears throat> I just recently was listening to a panel. I was looking for that too. But anyway, I was recently looking, listening to a panel where a man started off by saying, and what he's doing is doing the comparisons between male and female and what would happen in society in a collapse. And then he prefaced that by saying, men are hunters and gatherers by nature. And this intelligent woman asked him, do you hunt? And he said, yes, I do. She proceeded to ask him, well, what caliber of rifle or what rifle do you hunt with? He started tap dancing. When he didn't have any wiggle room or any place to run, and he knew he was backed up in the corner, then he, he started just naming off brands of rifles. Didn't tell you the caliber or what his chamber in. None of that. And another guy came on that panel and said, listen, men today are not hunting and they're not gathering. We all shop. Well, this is what Pastor Dow comes in play. Because what we're doing over here straightway as men, um, we're not like y'all out there in that world. You see, a collapse could happen in the United States of America. And when I tell you that the men of straightway, we will be hunting and gathering, I'm telling you a fact. When I can tell, I, I can flat out tell you, we have brothers in this ministry that have Remington 207s, 30-06. Um, I can go on and on and on down the line naming hunting rifles that we have and what they're chambering in. Um, I personally am looking for a 6.5 Creedmoor. That's what I'm looking for. A real nice one, too, at that. Uh, but that's my preference. Um, he, The guy goes on to name a 22. And I'm trying to think, the only damn thing you're going to be hunting with a 22 is a rabbit. And that's unclean. Or maybe some type of pheasant or a bird, but you ain't killing no big game with no 22. You got to be one hell of a shot and know exactly where to hit them at. I said all that to say this. Here on the internet, there are a lot of people that are trying to present themselves as they are some type of source of intelligence. And when they speak, they take talking points that they have heard somebody else say it. In other words, they're stealing somebody else's words and talking points. But then when they get called on the BS that they think that they know, they get offended. And his offense was, he asked that woman, raise up your left hand and show me the ring on your hand, knowing full well that she's not married. Well, in that case, over here straightway, if you follow that logic and reasoning, then all our women will be finished because our women do not wear wedding rings according to what we know what the scripture says so they can raise their left hand and you won't see nothing on either one of them i said all that to say this there are people out here that are pretending to be whatever they're pretending to be it's up to you to have a critical ear and a discerning heart to know if these people really truly mean what they say or are they stealing somebody else's words and phrases and sentences and presenting themselves as something as they are not? And that happens a lot, too many times more often than not on this internet. Too many men are presenting themselves as something that they are not. And then when a woman calls you and being honorable, she, does, she was not dishonorable, she was not disrespectful, she did not get loud. If you can believe that in this generation. She didn't try to get sassy. She didn't try to use a smart mouth. She kept her demeanor meek and humble. Uh, she continued in the midst of all that chaos, held her tongue as much as she could until she could actually 
tell the people the reason why she asked that question. Then she went on to say, I know because I hunt. And then she proceeded to go on and, and then name not only uh, what she hunts, but what her grandfather uses when he hunted. And, and I tell you, and what that did was that shamed, I'm not even going to say a man, it shamed the male, the male today. You see, because for this society to sit up and try to lump all men into one category and saying we all shop. No, you got that all wrong. I don't shop. I don't have to shop. I don't. Our sisters go shopping. But even at that, listen, at Straightway, we hunt our own deer. When possible, we go on trips to hunt our own moose and elk. Um, we hunt wild turkey, we hunt, uh, we fish, and we catch, I, listen, man, if I could, let me show you something real quick, I'm going to show you, man, I get in my phone, I'm going to show some pictures up here and show you how, that just last week, and I'm more than likely going again this week, I can show you picture after picture after picture from Pastor Dow, and Elder Doug, to Brother Brett, Brother Scott, um, Brother McNabb, Brother JC, um, I can pretty much show you pictures past, present, of where when you hear me say something, I'm included in that number, and now that we have rambunctious young men that have learned how to hunt, fish, track, and have the desire to do this. I want y'all to listen to me. Straightway is not like the rest of this world. Our de our, listen, our refrigerators are still full of venison that we hunted this past fall and winter. Our refrigerators right now is full of fish that we caught this year. And we've been eating on it too as well this year. We probably still have a couple of turkeys in the refrigerator. Now, we're not like the rest of the world, man, because our Bible, the Holy Scriptures, is giving us a dietary law. So we found it very beneficial to us to follow the dietary law written right here in this book. So we don't hunt squirrel and raccoons and possums, groundhogs, foxes, pigs, boars. Now we don't, we don't eat catfish. We leave that to y'all. Y'all can have all that you want. It's, it's for the nations. But I wanted to get on here and say that when people, listen, in this generation, people are careful to paint a broad brush on what they believe that is the common consensus of the whole world or the state of men in America. First of all, we don't live in the city. And that's a big benefit to us. And because we don't live in the city, man, we can, listen, I, I can, which way can I go on this? I can show you videos of us field dressing deer in the dead of the winter and bringing it to our sisters to package. We raise our own meat birds. I show y'all that stuff like it's all the time. We grow our own greens and our own gardens and we raise our own fruits and our own vegetables and we store them and we can them. And I know most people don't know what that means, but we do that. There is nothing wrong with yesterday year, but however, Many of you in those population centers out there, you have handicapped yourself. And some of you even have moved out of the city into the country and you still are handicapped because you don't know how to hunt. You don't know how to fish. You don't know how to field dress an animal. You don't know how to, to fillet a fish. You don't know how to skin. You don't know how to do any of this. And, and because you don't know how to do it, you cannot teach your sons and your sons will not be able to teach their sons 
and you will not be able to teach your son sons. There's a lot of things that, that many of you, you use your mouth to give accolades and co-sign on what everybody else is doing, not that you can do it yourself. And that's sad. And that's what I had reason why it had me caused me to jump on here because that man could not answer that woman while at the same time trying to demean and disparage and impugn this woman's character. And she stayed in the utmost state of high honor. And, and he got all butt hurt because she caught him in his facade. She caught him in his lie red handedly. And isn't that a lot is that not like a lot of you people out there parading to be Israelites? Don't you pray to be Israelites? I mean, after all, to be a true Israelite, you're an agricultural people. It's one thing to get on the streets and holler and scream at people and stuff. But do you live what the book says? All you do is just talk about it. Who do you truly depend on for your living? This system could collapse and straightway will be fine for years to come. Can you say that? And there's a lot of other groups out there that are following what this book says. And most people out there today fancy themselves as men of Yah. Men of Yah. They, they really truly believe that they're following these scriptures, yet they don't have the skills, the resources, neither would they spend the time, the energy, and the effort to even try to learn any of this. And these same men that talk like that do not even, can't even shoot a pistol, know nothing about home defense, community defense, know nothing about personal security, have no game plan if you're out there in these population centers in the city and if all of a sudden something pop off, what is your reaction? What is your plan? What is your solution? Have you have you have do you have your family trained if you're in one of these uh, brick and mortar stores of these corporations and all of a sudden there's somebody there that wants to have one of these make my day moments? Literally, make my day moments in the store. Do you know how to react or do you respond? And if you respond, how do you react? And what's the difference between the two? Pastor, I don't know. I, 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 I. See what I'm talking about? So most of you, you're married. Most of you women out there are married to males who are parading around and masquerading as men, but they're not men. They're literally not men. Because a man is a protector. A man is a provider. That's what a man is. A, a man is there to provide security. A man is there to make sure that he pr pr uh, provides a living and a roof and clothes and food in the mouths of his Eshaz or his wives and children. Man, there's much to be desired today then, isn't it? So, I'll give you an example. I just heard my precious brother Pete Rambo the other day go over and he did a wonderful job in Leviticus 19. You see, we have our own, what you call, <clears throat> welfare system. You know, the law teaches that when you plant your gardens, and I'm going to talk in terms that we understand and comprehend in this day, time, and hour. When you plant your gardens, you are supposed to leave the edges of your garden. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the needy, meaning the poor, and the strangers. So one minute we're asking people where your tassels, where your teeth seats at, where your fringes, where your beard. Where's your garden? Where's your garden at? For the poor and the needy and the strangers to clean off of us because it doesn't belong to you. That's y'all's provision for the poor and the needy that are among you, that are surrounded by you. They're supposed to be able to come. We do that here. We literally do that here. And I had got to the point where I got so dang upset because the saints here straightway, the brothers and sisters here straightway are so benevolent that they would go and get bags and they would go and pick the fruit and the vegetables and put them in bags for people um, to come by and just pick them up and go. And I said to them, what are y'all doing? 
Well, Pastor Dow, we're just helping the people. I know you're not. You're hindering the people. What do you mean you helping them out? All you're doing is you're making sure you solidify the ignorance that is in them. Do not go out there and pick the fruit and vegetables for them. They know where it's at. We provided the bags. All they have to do is go and get it. And you know how many people went and got the produce and the fruit of the land after I said that? Less than 1%. Oh, they were all glad to go pick it up, man. They were all glad to pick it up when it was it was harvested, packaged, packaged, and it was laid out there for them to get it. But boy, for them to go down and to pick a piece of fruit off the vine, to take some greens and pluck it, pick some blackberries, harvest some garlic, dig for some sweet potatoes, ha! <laughs> Shuck, pick and shuck the air of corn. Pick the bush beans. Pull out the cabbage. Harvest the greens themselves. You lazy ass Americans. <laughs> See, that's what the supermarkets have done for you all today. You go drive to the grocery store. And you got all this stuff and you think you've done your due diligence because you can pull out some Federal Reserve notes and you can give that to the cashier and you go home and, and you act like it's so proud and arrogant that you are, that you've done something. Literally, you've done something. Could you survive? No, be honest about yourself. For once in your life, could you and your family survive based on your skill set, man? I hear a bunch of this, a hell of a lot of this, but can they really in true reality? Can they? That's why I can't listen to a lot of these people because these people, they talk, but they don't, they're not doers. These people are hypocritical mockers. They stage playing hypocrites. They present themselves as if they're something. They go steal somebody else's words and talking points, and they use them, and they themselves are not a partaker of the very dang thing that they say that they are of and what they stand for. And then when you are caught on your BS, all you try to do is deflect and character assassinate and impugn somebody else's character because you yourself are a stage playing soft hypocrite. And it's sad. It's just sad, isn't it? It's sad. Go back and look at Pastor Dow's YouTube videos. Type in deer hunting. Type in butchering. Type in honey. Type, type in whatever you want. <laughs> Blessed are not the hearers of the word, but the doers. So a lot of these people out here pretending to be Israelites or people of the book. Man, you just go ahead and chalk it up and count it out. They ain't hypocrites. And then the ones that are here Israelites and the ones that are strangers in the land or whatever you want to call yourself. When it comes time for you to actually come and get some free produce and you don't want to harvest it, then you got to find out what in the hell is really going on in the spirit because this is a sad situation and this is a systemic behavior a chaotic behavior here in the united states of america one day those trucks they're going to stop running to the store and just like this woman caught that man in his bs you're going to be caught in yours one day but your reality may not be on a talk show it may not be just because somebody's in here having talking points and stuff. It may be the reality of life. And when that belly hit that spine, and all you got to do is them, that, them, them bones and them big eyes of those children, that wife looking up at you, so-called provider, then what are you going to do? What are you going to do then? Because you can't go depend on another man because I'm telling you, by nature, when it comes down to survival and protection and warfare, Men are nothing but 100% savages. They're survivalists, literally. And when it comes to either their family or your family, somebody getting ready to suffer. When it comes to their family or your family, somebody is getting ready to suffer. You can believe that. And it won't be mine. Do you know security? Do you know how to protect you and yours? Do you know how to feed you and yours without depending on the systems and the truckers bringing stuff 
from afar to your homestead? Do you have a storehouse? What is a storehouse? You remember, some of you can't even remember grandma and granddaddy because they ain't no different than you are. But there used to be a time that they had a cellar or a storage room that people knew how to can. And that particular discipline was taught to the successive generations coming after him. They will pass that down. The only can you know how to buy today or the only can you know how to do is go buy one from the store. You weak. Y'all weak. And you ain't ready. Much less ready for the great tribulation. You ain't ready for what's coming down the pike. <laughs> I'm glad that that woman set that man straight because it needed to be said. And some of you out there, you a bunch of talking stage playing hypocrites that ain't worth two dead flies. And you know I'm telling the truth. So I applaud that woman. I think her name is Courtney. I applaud her. I applaud her. Man, do I applaud her. Now ask Pastor Dow or any of the brethren on our, in our communities as straightway if we know how to do any of that. Not only will we call it out for you, but we'll show you. And it won't be something that was done from yesterday year. It'll be something that's been done recent. That's the truth, and that's the true straight way. Come out of her, my people, and be you separate. Say up the Almighty and touch not the unclean thing. Then he'll receive you and you'll be his people. Come out from among them, be you separate. Come out among her, that you don't be a partaker of her plagues. Come out, come out, come out, come out.